Today I will be showing you guys how to install a underseat subwoofer and amp. And the first thing you want to do as always when working on electrics is disconnect your negative part of the battery. And then the next step is you want to disconnect the positive so that you can fit your main power cable which is this one that came in the kit. And you want to fit it, don't fit it over this, but fit it uh, in between this, this nut holding this on right there. And then usually, when you buy these in a kit, the power cable, it comes with a fuse. Mine comes with a fuse here. The fuse, usually you want it uh, very close to the battery. This is a 30 amp fuse, but again, it depends which one you, which kit you buy. This is from Stinger. And so I start the, the battery, and I go up here, just tying it out of the way for now, and going across here. And I did find a spot in the firewall, so I didn't have to drill. As you can see, it's right there. It's just a piece of rubber. Uh, I did cut a hole in it, it's real easy to do, and then you just push it through there, and then it should come out uh, under your steering wheel on the driver's side. After bringing it from the firewall, which is right here, you run the cable up so it's away from the pedals, and I moved it to this side right here. You have to remove uh, the kick plate right here, and then uh, there's another piece that covers all of this area, and I looped it right through there, zip tied up underneath the dash, and then I ran it all down the side of the door, and I'll put my under seat sub uh, right back underneath the back seat right behind the driver's side. So after you started wiring up everything for your sub, go ahead and take it back out, and then uh, I've read that it's a good thing to prevent extra noise by putting uh, the sub onto a piece of uh, particle board in order to reduce the sound and see I have measured out where I'm going to put my screws same on the top side for that and I'll drill them and I'll bolt the sub to the board and then put it in the back of the truck so after I drilled the holes I drilled four of them two here and two up there for each side and my my under seat subwoofer came with these little stands so that you could drill into this and this is just particle board I think it's uh, 5 eighths thick and so all I did was I piloted the holes and then I took the screws that came with the kit and I went ahead and put them all in on all corners here are the other two right here okay so I've started to take the dash apart as you can see this is my radio and if we just pull it out a little bit here are the uh, L and the R RCA output cables that you'll need for your speakers. This is only if you have an aftermarket radio. If you do not have an aftermarket radio, and you'll know because it has a red and a white uh, output. Here I'll show you. Those are what they look like right there. And if you do not have that, then you'll have to wire uh, power and negative to each, each speaker that you have in your vehicle. But if you do have an aftermarket one, then you'll just go into your wiring here and figure out which one is your turn-on wire. So let's see, these are my turn-on wires, the uh, positive and the negative. And I have soldered them together, and this is the wire that is included in the kit so that the sub knows when to turn on. And you'll route this cable as well as the RCA output cables along the opposite side of your vehicle opposite side of where the power cable is. I have my power cable running along this dashboard right here all the way to the back and if we move the seat down this is what I have so far. I have the negative which I've hooked up to bare metal right behind here. Don't forget in order to get bare metal you want to either file it or use a screwdriver and scrape away this paint. It has to be bare metal for the best connection. And so I have that plugged into the negative right there and then I also have the positive which is from this side of the vehicle that I've ran to here and all this will be under a seat it's okay it's a it's made for under the seat subwoofer and these are your RCA cable outputs from that run all the way to your radio on the opposite side of where you put your power cable and this is the remote the remote control and this is what it looks like you can either turn it uh, to min or to max depending on what you prefer and if you, you know you get the right 
power connection if this light is green. It says power green. So then if you do not have a aftermarket stereo, you would have to plug in, use this plug in right here, and then there are wires that come out from this plug so that you can connect them to each side of your speaker. And then after you have everything connected, this is just a test setup, you always want to do a test setup before you install everything, you'll want to adjust all of these, the low pass, bass boost, and input gain, in order to best fit the, the sound for your vehicle. Every vehicle will be different. Uh, this truck, I have adjusted it so that it will be the best sounding to to my vehicle, but it will just depend. So that's the setup that I have so far. I will be putting all the seats and everything back in there, and that I'll put that probably sideways so that it will fit better up under the seat. But right now, I'll go ahead and wire the RCA cable and this blue turn-on cable to the other side of the vehicle. And all you need to do is you just need to remove the door trim. This pops up really easily. I do have trim removal tools, which are really great to use so you do not break all of the number of tabs and everything that are up under here. So, I've already showed you where the power cable comes from, from the battery through the firewall. And I remove this panel and plate, whatever you want to call it right here, in order to route the cable safely to the back of the truck. And I will go ahead and do that to the other side of the vehicle for the RCA and the turn on power cable. So now I've brought the RCA cable and the turn on cable from the other side of the truck. I wire, I went from uh, the kick plates, well from the radio to the kick plates and then I just kind of cut through the middle right here right about where this crease is. And then I came around here and I'll plug them in right here but first I'll get the, the bottom part of the seat and put right here and see if this uh, does sit, sit low enough and if I need to reposition it. I'll probably turn it horizontally so that I will be able to zip tie all the cables up in this corner up under the seat. So af after you get all your wiring done and again always check and make sure that everything works before you go and install everything just in case you have any wiring problems. Alright so now I have the bottom part that all the seats latch onto and it looks like I have plenty of space as I'll show you right down here. I have plenty of space all around the sub and of course I'll tuck in these wires and zip tie them over, over here so that they're out of the way and not to be seen but it does look like I have enough clearance all the way around and that's good because these do pr produce heat and mine mine has vents on either side to cool it down as well as this board to keep it up off the carpet and for noise isolation so after uh, you test it again just to make sure you don't know if any wires got shuffled around or anything but they shouldn't have so go ahead and clean it up either in the corner or wherever you want to do it and then go ahead and replace the seats as well as the panels and whatever else you removed and that's how you install a underseat sub in uh, F-150 thanks for watching